Greetings, seekers of the unknown, and welcome to this realm of revelations and mysteries. Today, we will venture down less trodden paths, exploring secrets that defy conventional understanding. Before we delve into this enigma, allow me to share a maxim that will guide our journey. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. These words, steeped in esoteric meaning, remind us that true will is the key to unraveling the fabric of the universe. On this channel, we will embark together on a quest for hidden truths, challenging the boundaries of the known. This is a space for those yearning for self-knowledge, for the courageous who wish to plunge into the abyss of understanding. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss out on upcoming revelations and share your reflections in the comments below. Here, we will build a community of esoteric explorers, sharing our experiences and learning from one another. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. May these words resonate in your minds as we unveil together the secrets that lie beyond the veil of reality. May this journey be filled with discoveries and enlightenment. Let us then enter the realms of the unknown. This is our sanctuary of hidden wisdom. Welcome to the eternal quest for truth. The classroom of cosmic consciousness. Our being in this school does not make us learn, but within this school lies the opportunity for all learning. It has its grades, its classes, its sciences and its arts, and admission is the birthright of man. Its graduates are the guides, its pupils are all created things, its examples are nature, and its rules are the laws of God. Those who wish to enter the greater colleges and universities must first and foremost, day by day and year by year, work through the common school of life and present to their new teachers the diplomas they have won, upon which is written the name that only those who have received it can read. The hours may seem long and the teachers cruel, but each of us must walk that path and only those who have passed through the gateway of experience are ready to advance. There are few occult students today who have not heard of the alchemist, but there are very few who know anything about the strange men who lived during the Middle Ages and concealed under chemical symbolism the history of the soul. At a time when expressing a religious thought meant courting annihilation at the stake or wheel, they worked silently in underground caves and cellars to learn the mysteries of nature, which the religious opinions of their day denied them the privilege of explaining. Let's imagine the ancient alchemist immersed in the study of natural law, finding him among the test tubes and retorts of his hidden laboratory. Around him are massive tomes and manuscripts by ancient writers. The alchemist is a student of nature's mystery and has devoted years, perhaps lives, to the work he loves. His hair has long since greyed with age. By the light of his little lamp, he reads slowly and with difficulty the strange symbols on the pages before him. His mind is centered on one thing, finding the philosopher's stone. With all the chemicals at his disposal and their various combinations thoroughly understood, he is laboring with his furnace and burners to make the base metals the philosopher's gold. At last he finds the key and gives the world the secret of the philosopher's gold and the immortal stone. Salt, sulfur and mercury are the answers to his problem. From them he extracts the elixir of life and, with the power they give him, transmutes the base metals into gold. 
The world laughs at him, but he goes on in silence, actually doing the very things the world believes impossible. After many years of labor, he takes his little lamp and silently slips away into the great unknown. No one knows what he has done or the discoveries that he has made, but he, with his little lamp, still explores the mysteries of the universe. As the close of the 15th century enshrouded him with mystery, so the dawn of the 20th century is crowning him with the glory of his just reward. For the world is beginning to realize the truths he knew and to marvel at the understanding that his years of labor had earned for him. Man has been an alchemist from the time when he first raised himself and, with the powers long latent, pronounced himself as a human being. Human experiences are the chemicals of life with which the philosopher experiments. Nature is the great book whose secrets he seeks to understand through her own wondrous symbolism. His own spiritual flame is the lamp by which he reads, and without this, the printed pages mean nothing to him. His own body is the furnace in which he prepares the philosopher's stone. His senses and organs are the test tubes, and the incentive is the flame from the burner. Salt, sulfur, and mercury are the chemicals of his craft. According to the ancient philosophers, salt was of the earth, sulfur was of the spirit, while mercury was only a messenger like the winged Hermes of the Greeks. His color is purple, which is the blending of the red, the body, and the blue the spirit. The alchemist realizes that he himself is the philosopher's stone and that this stone is made diamond-like when the salt and the sulfur, the body and the spirit are united through mercury, the link of the mind. Man is the incarnated principle of mind, as the animal is of emotion. He stands with one foot in the heavens and the other on the earth. His higher being is lifted to the celestial sphere, but the lower man ties him to matter. The philosopher builds his sacred stone by harmonizing his spirit and his body. The hard knocks of life chip the stone away and facet it until it reflects light from a million different angles. The ultimate achievement is the philosopher's stone. The elixir of life is once again the spirit fire, or rather the fuel that nourishes that fire. The changing of the base metal into gold is accomplished when he transmutes the lower man into spiritual gold. This he does by study and love. Thus he is building within himself the lost panacea for the world's woe. The changing of the base metal into gold can be called a literal fact, for the same chemical combination that produces spiritual gold will also produce physical gold. It is a known fact that many of the ancient alchemists really did create precious metals out of lead and alloys, but it was upon the principle that all things contain some part of everything else. In other words, every grain of sand or drop of water contains, in some proportion, every element of the universe. Therefore, the alchemist did not try to make something from nothing, but rather to extract and build that which already was. The living philosopher's stone is a very beautiful thing indeed, like the fire opal. It shines with a million different lights, changing with the mood of the wearer. The transmuting process, whereby the spiritual fire passes through the furnace of purification, and radiates from the body as the sole body of gold and blue is a very beautiful one. The Masons have among their symbols that of a five-pointed star with two clasped hands within it, and in that we have the mystery of the Philosopher's Stone. The clasped hands represent the united man, in which the higher and the lower are working for their mutual betterment by a cooperative rather than a competitive system. The five-pointed star is the soul body, the symbol of this cooperation. It is the living philosopher's stone, more precious than all the jewels of earth. From it pour the rivers of life spoken of in the Bible. 
It is the star of the morning that heralds the dawn of mastery, and it is the reward that comes to those who follow in the footsteps of the ancient alchemist. It is well for the student to realize that the alchemy of life produces in natural sequence all of the states of progression explained in the writings of the alchemist. Until finally, the sun and the moon are united as described in the hermetic marriage, which is, in truth, the marriage of the body and the spirit for the mutual development of each other. We who study the hermetic arts are the alchemists who, centuries ago, carried on in secret our studies of the soul. And we still have the same opportunity that we had then, even more than then. We can state our opinions with little danger of personal injury. The modern alchemist, thus, has an opportunity that his ancient brother never had. In the context of daily life, he sees nature's experiments carried on. He sees the fusing of metals, and from the everyday book of life, he may study divinity through experience and suffering. The steel of his spirit is tempered by the flame of life. As the moon in the zodiac touches off like a fuse, the happenings of life, so his own desires and wishes, touch off the powers of his soul. And the experiences may be transmuted into soul qualities when he has developed the eye that enables him to read the simplest of all books, the everyday life. The alchemist of today is not hidden in caves and cellars, studying alone, but as he goes on with his work, it is seen that walls are built around him, and while he is in the world, like the master of old, he is not of it. As he goes further in his work, the light of other people's advice and outside help grows weaker and weaker, until finally he stands alone in darkness. Then comes the time that he must use his own lamp, and the various experiments which he has carried on must be his guide. He must take the elixir of life, which he has developed and with it fill the lamp of his spiritual consciousness, and holding that above his head, walk into the great unknown. There, if he has been a good and faithful servant, he will learn of the alchemy of divinity. Where now test tubes and bottles are his implements, there in worlds and globes he will study. And as a silent watcher will learn from the Divine One, who is the great alchemist of all the universe, the greatest alchemy of all, the creation of life, the maintenance of form and the building of worlds. As we conclude this journey through the veils of knowledge, allow me to share one last reflection before we part ways. Love is the law, love under will. These transcendental words resonate in the essence of our existence, a constant reminder that even in the shadows of the unknown, the power of love is the light that guides our path. The pursuit of truth, the exploration of mysteries, all of it is permeated by the fabric of love, intricately woven with our deepest will. As you venture forth on your own journeys, may love be your compass and will, your flame. I thank you for sharing this time in this sanctuary of wisdom. May the revelations we've uncovered together inspire you to continue your quest for knowledge and truth. Until our next encounter in the corridors of mystery, may love and will always be with you.